Hello and welcome to my latest video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the new Sentinel from the uh, Imperial Guard or Astra Militarum army box set that Games Workshop sent me. And I've built it in uh, the armoured version so when you get the kit you have the option of building it like this as you see on the screen and there's a few different weapon options as well. That's why I've obviously picked the, uh, the plasma cannon and he's got a hunter killer missile on there and a few other bits and bobs that you can change uh, for your own preference uh, but obviously you can build it uh, where it looks like it's got kind of a roll cage on the top uh, and you can see inside and the, it has the driver and all the other little bits and pieces inside the cabin so uh, you have the option of how you want to build it uh, it has a couple of leg options as well so well basically you can have um, build it uh, following the instructions with either leg being step uh, having it stepping forward uh, the toes are all in fixed positions and things like that though so you do have to Put a bit of effort into converting it if you want to do any kind of more um, elaborate poses with it. I haven't glued the top part on and haven't glued the weapon on because that'll make it easier for me to paint. Um, but really nicely for the weapons actually they stick on quite uh, hard like it's a very solid fit so you don't need to magnetize them if you don't want to. I mean it might be a bit neater or whatever or you know just for your own peace of mind but they do um, slide on and they don't uh, wobble or anything like that uh, so if you don't want to bother uh, with magnetizing it's quite a, a nice easy thing to do with it um, to start with uh, so I'm going to be painting this model grey and I'm not going to put any decals on it uh, or uh, you know, transfers and things um, it's going to be a, a very generic looking model um, and that's just because I, I really I wanted to paint it grey uh, because that will then work really nicely with the OSL from the plasma gun that I'm going to paint on it uh, you can see I've started with the airbrush so I'm using a size 0 0.4 needle and the PSI is around about 30 and the paint the demonet hide paint is being thinned with uh, Tamiya X20A uh, uh, thinner and all I'm doing is you know just giving it a, a very simple coat of paint now the only thing you have to kind of like pay attention to with doing this is the placement of how uh, strong I make the lighting or the opacity of the paint so you do want some transitions on here uh, the way I'm painting it is more of a dramatic lighting way and that will be main, uh, mainly obvious on the front of the uh, the cabin uh, that was the main reason for picking the armored sentinel as well uh, so if you look at the front here you can see in the top left it has like a really strong opaque finish on it and then as it travels down to the bottom right it becomes less and less now be careful not to be too kind of light with how you do this you do want to put a good amount of paint on because we are going to add multiple layers of paint uh, as we highlight it up so don't just do like a th it's not like you're painting with xenophil paint here like um, this is like the actual color scheme you might find because a uh, demon hide is already a fairly light gray color that it's a bit tricky to get the like get a really smooth coat without getting any speckling on it uh, but because of the way I'm going to be doing the weathering later on that will cover over any of that um, and make it all sort of blend together and work quite nicely so it's not like a, a very high skill um, thing like there's no like, really difficult techniques that are going to be in this video um, but it will help if you your brush control is a little bit better and you can be quite neat um, so there you can see that's uh, one coat already done so then what I'm going to use is some P3 Mora White now you don't have to use P3 Mora White uh, I say this in nearly every video but uh, you can use like pretty much any white you want uh, it's just that I prefer the P3 Mora White just because I find it a little bit smoother but you just take a small amount of that on your brush and you mix it into the uh, mixture that you've already got you know the demonet hide with the uh, X20A thinner or whatever thinner you want really but <laughs> I'm using X20A thinner and you know mix a little bit of white in it and this time you're refining the light placement on there so because I'm not doing um, usually when people paint uh, airbrush vehicles they'll do what's called modulation so you have uh, usually they'll paint the bottom half of a panel light and then as it gets towards the top it goes darker uh, because that means that then the panel that goes above that you have it light at the edge so it basically goes light dark light dark all over where you can make it so it gives like a kind of like a nice high contrast thing uh, and that works really well from all angles but it can be a little bit boring and it's not super realistic either i'm going for a bit of a combination of 
semi-realistic lighting uh, mixed with the kind of modulation as well so if you look at the front there where I've painted on and I'm just doing another highlight here now so this is the third uh, layer of paint so I've added a bit more white again uh, and you can see so the top left is quite light but this is going that's more like a realistic lighting position so if you held that under your lamp you'd see the light would hit the top left uh, kind of part of the model or at least the top section anyway I always do the top left a little bit just because it makes it a bit more interesting having it asymmetrical and you know, so that makes it more realistic from the front and it's a really nice kind of dramatic uh, fade that goes you know starting from the top left and it goes down to the bottom right being quite dark at the bottom and you catch the top of the canopy as well and you know the front lip from the the vision slot um, and then the rest of the model you can kind of like choose where you want the uh, the lighting to go um, and you can see on the legs here as well so it's a little bit of a combination of realistic lighting which is more like at the front of the ankles there and on the top part of the thigh top part of the kneecap and then on the uh, the leg closest to us on the thigh there I've just used modulation so I've highlighted at the bottom at the bottom and it goes up into a fade at the top so, so that was remember three stages of uh, airbrushing highlight uh, and you don't take it to pure white either so you start off with demon at hide and then uh, another two stages you add a bit of white each time and how bright you make it is purely up to you but it does work the process does work a little bit better if you make it maybe a bit lighter than you intend um, from just looking at it so it'll look really kind of like bright and um, washed out but because of the weathering that I'm going to add to it that will knock it back later on so you, you sort of like over highlight it but remember don't take it up to pure white because then it's well I mean it also work with uh, pure white as well but you take away some of the color and things so you know with Demon at Hide it has that nice sort of lilac -y color so you saw there I have basically given the whole of the metal areas on the model a quick coat of burnt iron uh, Vallejo metal color and uh, I'm also using some uh, scale 75 uh, Viking gold and this is just going on any of the little kind of um, with the wing skull things kind of like Aquilas without the bird bit in the middle <laughs> it's just you know um, anything like that because I'm going to be um, I'll put a little bit of weathering on those uh, and by weathering I just mean I'm going to put some like uh, cyberite green on it to make it look like uh, like an oxidized copper or not like brass um, that kind of thing anyway uh, you know if, <laughs> if it's a gold color usually people will do um, some sort of verdigris uh, weathering on it just because it makes it again look a bit more interesting uh, and that will also then make it uh, stand out separately because uh, all the other metal on the model is going to have some uh, orange rust style uh, weathering on it uh, and so that will then contrast uh, against the kind of greeny element of the uh, the verdigris as well uh, now here you can see I'm going to paint the hunter killer missile red so I'm using Mephiston red however uh, I strongly suggest that you don't paint it red <laughs> and I know this is a bit a bit dumb um, because obviously I'm showing you how to paint it red and I didn't think it through properly but the problem is with the plasma gun uh, OSL color that I'm going to paint on there which is orange and, and we'll start with Mephiston red uh, so it will kind of um, clash like it fights against the uh, the color of the uh, the OSL that I'm going to paint on there uh, so I I'm going to spend a bit of time showing you how to paint a red hunter killer missile and then you'll suddenly see it turns to black uh, now the process that I use to paint it is exactly the same like in terms of highlight placement and you know brush marks and things like that but and you know at this stage I'm, it's just a flat red color um, because I, I want to do the uh, the weathering on the model first um, but you know when you see the the black uh, just watch how I paint the red and uh, if you want you can turn your monitor black and white it, you'll get the same <laughs> the same process pretty much uh, but anyway for the for the weathering it's uh, dark oath flesh um, a contrast color now you need a kind of a big brush for this uh, I think this is a it's either a size four or a size six but it's quite a large brush uh, it doesn't matter exactly what it is um, but uh, so this is like a like I said either size four or size six artist a brush, brush. Um, although I don't recommend that you use a new brush like if you can find some old crappy brush for doing this because you're gonna slather the paint on there as you can see and you're gonna work reasonably quickly with this now I have had people say they're a bit worried when they see me do this because um, if you don't work too quickly the paint starts to dry 
and you get like little tea stain effects on it. Uh, I did get one or two on this actually myself when I did this, but it doesn't actually matter. It just, you know, sort of blends in with the weathering. Uh, but it's mainly like the sort of the front section that's important. And the reason that I also have the contrast medium there is you can see as I'm applying the dark earth weathering that it um, it looks really kind of like down brown and, and dirty. Uh, and that's sort of what I'm looking for, but it's too much. So, and the reason that I don't thin, like so what I could do is put some dark oath mead, um, flesh contrast paint and mix it in with the contrast medium to have like a watered down effect for it uh, and the reason you need the contrast medium is then it still works in the way that contrast paint is meant to with it flowing into the recesses and not pooling quite as much on the flat surfaces however that gives a very even look to it all over and I don't want that I do want some areas especially the more shadowy areas uh, along the bottom part of the uh, sentinel um in you know just various other areas i want them to be darker so there's a variation in there so i have control by slathering on some of the uh, the contrast medium especially on the front and top sections uh mix it in a, a lot and then it makes all the pigment kind of like flow down the sides this is or it can be quite messy especially if you're trying to do it on video like i am uh not ham am but <laughs> the uh um, the other thing is that the contrast medium, because you're slathering so much on, it does give you the opportunity while it's drying to take off the excess. So, uh, and again, you want a big brush for this. And all you do is uh, you just rinse the brush off in water, quickly run it over some kitchen roll to dry it a bit. And then you're doing this dragging down motion because this will give sort of the idea of um, like streaking on there, but very kind of soft streaking. So it's not you know usually when you see it uh, oil weathering with streaking uh, that looks kind of like harder lines now i'm going to be painting on some uh, streaking lines uh, in a moment as well but i'm going to be painting those with normal acrylic paints so you don't need to use any oils for this and oddly enough i actually th find that the uh, doing this so this is very much like oil weathering what i'm doing you know the um, covering the model and then taking off the excess uh, I actually find this is a little bit um, easier for me to do so you don't have to wait around a long time for paint to dry and actually the contrast paint gives quite a smooth finish whereas uh, if you're not careful with when you thin down uh, the oil paints and things you can get kind of like a sort of a, a bitty finish to it but this gives a very very smooth finish um, and it's just like I, I just find it like quicker and easier to uh, work with but it is probably a bit more expensive because of all the uh, the contrast paint you're using so like if you prefer to use oil paints or you're familiar with how to do it for for kind of like that kind of weathering then by all means uh, do the same thing um, but just use some uh, oil paint instead uh, so next up what I'm doing is giving uh, and also you know just before you do this so you saw like I was just giving all the metals a quick coat of null and oil but um, make sure that you did the contrast um, dark oath flesh on the legs and you covered all of the metal parts. Uh, what you'll find is uh, the metal parts will dry kind of like a, a more browny color. I mean, that's obvious because of the, the dark oath flesh is a brown kind of color, uh, but it makes it look everything look a bit more grimy. Um, and don't worry too much if you've got a few patches where you want it to be lighter and you've still got a few like it's still a little bit grimy because we will be painting over it we're not just leaving uh, the armor to look like this um, but up next I'm going to be painting on some chipping now the common uh, method for painting chipping on vehicles is sponge chipping uh, or I mean you can do salt weathering or whatever you want really um, but I find that this gives me way more control over, over the placement and the look of the chips uh, it takes a bit longer but ultimately I just prefer the look and I prefer having that complete control over exactly how the, the weathering looks uh, so and the reason for that is it gives you kind of like artistic choices for um, you know composition of them so if you've got like nice uh, bright highlights and you don't want to get any uh, weathering on there and you can put some weathering in the dark part areas or if you've got some dodgy uh, stains on the model that haven't dried very nicely from the contrast you can cover over them with the contrast uh, with the uh, Rhinox hide by the way that's the color I'm using so you can cover over them with the Rhinox hide um, but it is also important to use a, a certain amount of uh, realism with the uh, the chipping placement so anything that's on an edge will naturally catch uh, more damage because um, it, there's a higher friction uh, with those uh, sharp edges. So, you know, the paint tends to rub off on, 
on edges pretty much but also you'll get things like you know knocks you get bullet shot uh, holes on there um, little dents all over the the model but you know just focus more a little bit on the edges uh, and it just looks more interesting and also it allows you to paint uh, streaking from those things because the the idea is that they've been chipped so the primer like in universe primer not the primer that you've you've used on the model but you, you know the vehicle when it's painted gets primed and then gets the color on top and so that will have been knocked off and then that allows the um the environment to interact with the whatever metal the vehicle's made of and then it becomes rusty and grimy from those areas and you get streaking um so you know it looks you know by putting the, the chipping on the edges and then you can have streaking from those chips and it works really nicely like that because i'm going to be using the same color so it, it will still be rhinox hide that will uh, come down from the street from the chips uh, and it sort of like all um, works together nicely like that uh, this won't be the only version of uh, so you can also put scratches by the way this won't be the only version of scratches you can just use uh, highlight paint uh, which i'll be doing later on as well to paint a few scratches uh, because and that will represent uh, lighter level scratches so when you have the dark rhinox hide uh, scratches that shows that it's gone all the way through and you know cut deep into the vehicle when it's a lighter one then it's just a surface area um, scratch right now we're on to the streaking that I was just talking about so you can see here um, I'm starting off with Mornfang Brown and this is close enough to the uh, the dark oath flesh that it blends in nicely and hopefully you got a few streaks on there remember when we were taking off the dark oath flesh with the large brush we were doing downward movement strokes uh, which leaves you know the sort of the vertical line like the soft vertical lines on the the arm panels and then when we go back with the Mornfang brown uh, we can go over those very very delicately just using the tip of the brush make sure the paint's watered down quite a bit as well uh, around about two parts water to one part paint although test it yourself like if you find when you if you use that mix that it's a bit uh, too thin and you can't get a mark then obviously thicken it up a bit uh, because everyone's paint is different depending on how long you've had it open and all sorts of things like you know uh, the water evaporating out of it um, try and make the line thicker at the top thinner at the bottom um, and but also uh, after painting on these lines we're going to go back to rhinox hide and the reason for that is so this is to represent kind of the, the rust element of the streaking and what happens with rust is and kind of like people get it the, the wrong way around really for how you paint rust but uh, the darker the area of rust the more concentrated it is and then uh, as it as the water reacts with it and spreads it out it becomes more orange so it's you know that you see the orange color the, the more watered down the uh, the rust is and so the closer to the rusty chip that's where it becomes darkest so that's why the rhinox hide works really well just using it at the very top of the chip right next or the very top of the streak right next to the chip uh, so it sort of blends together it um, makes it look like it's the chip that's running down pretty much uh, so here you can see i've started to paint highlights on all of the chips pretty much on the model now you have the option of not painting all of every single chip that you've put on. Uh, I prefer to just because uh, that's how my brain works, but um, like I, I like the look of uh, how that does. But if you just want to pick out kind of the important ones or you know just a few here and there, um, it will still look pretty good. Now, if you are going to pick out all of the chips like I do, then the more that you've painted on to begin with, the longer this process is going to take. If you've tried to be subtle and not gone completely over the top and done a really heavily, like a, say a Death Guard vehicle, m mega heavily weathered, then you'll have a much easier time of it. Uh, if you are going to do something that's very heavily weathered, then I strongly suggest that you do a combination of sponge chipping to start with and then refining it with a brush afterwards uh, because then you can still get that sort of hand placed look to it but without spending forever you know doing all these little chips building up into a massively uh, weathered uh, vehicle uh, so you know th there's always a place for different um, techniques and i have used sponge chipping as well it's not like it's a bad technique but it does give a very generic kind of finish to the model um, but you know having that in combination with uh, some hand placed chipping uh, kind of you know just brings the whole thing to life a little bit more and 
you know gives it more randomness to it because the problem with sponge chipping is, is it very much gives a result like copy paste and so a lot of the uh, the marks look very very similar even if you rotate the brush or the sponge rather um, it still tends to look very samey all over uh, where you can really bury the marks when you uh, use a brush so at the moment you can see I'm painting on some edge highlights uh, the majority of the edge highlights are going to be upwards facing or on the side so not really downwards facing you can paint a few downwards facing ones but uh, generally speaking if it's a downwards facing edge don't paint it as brightly as the upwards facing edge uh, because then you know, having the upwards facing edge uh, brighter and you can probably almost take these to white um, but what you probably will find is if you've used like the, uh, the the brightest highlight on your wet palette uh, you know when you were uh, well you probably don't have it on your wet palette but it when you uh, highlighted the armor panels to the, the brightest highlight um, if you mix the same level of uh, paint on your wet palette uh, that will work really nicely as a highlight uh, because remember the all the armor panels are now much darker because of the contrast uh, dark oath covering that they've had so even though it's the same color they now stand out nicely as a highlight color and what you're going to see, see here is that i'm using that same color again uh, so it might be an idea when you mix up the fun color for the highlight to also mix some on your wet palette uh, so that you've got something that matches pretty closely um, but what you can see here is that i'm painting on highlights now onto the armor panel and I'm focusing more on the top left section uh, but uh, you, so this is my favorite part of the painting on the model uh, but it's also the area where you can go the most wrong or take the most time uh, because like, the reason you can go the most wrong is because there's just like the whole model is armor panels and you can if you overpaint them you're going to ruin all of the nice transitions that you've airbrushed on you you could ruin the weathering that you've painted on uh and you can just ruin the transition from the airbrush as well and all those really important looks for the final part um but i'm incorporating the uh, the highlight that i'm painting on there in the top left and i'm also turning it into scratches so you can see here i'm just and remember earlier on when i was painting on the rhinox hide uh, scratches i said you can uh, also paint some light scratches on which are what these are which represent kind of like surface area like you know very shallow scratches on there um, but so the idea is to focus on the lightest parts like this is the very brightest part of the model and you're painting it in sort of a scratchy fashion now i'm using a size 00, zero artist opus brush and i'm painting these on just using the very tip so uh, you don't want to push too hard when you do this you know keep it so it's just the very tip of the brush so it leaves like a, a clean like a, a sharp sort of mark so it looks like a scratch uh, if you use a larger brush you could do the same thing but just be a little bit careful because if you push a bit harder with a larger brush you'll make a big mark where the, the nice thing is with a very thin brush you can push a little bit harder and it's not going to you know make a big fat mark with it um, you can right, so you can be quite sloppy on the brightest parts because you don't need those clean clear lines at that point um, and probably what you'll find is because demonet hide is uh, fairly translucent when it's watered down a bit so around about 50 50 water to paint for this mixture um, you know when you apply these you can probably do uh, two or three coats even to get a nice opaque finish with the bright highlight that you've got um, but as you go further out from that uh, you know you have to make the the scratches kind of look interesting because it's the scratches that are you know as you spread them out further that's what will create the uh, sort of the transition because I'm not using any other colors uh, and you have to be a little bit careful as you, you go further away from the brightest airbrush part that you've put on uh, because um, it bec the scratches become higher contrast against the darker background so you know be very careful when you start putting those scratches in anything that's you know getting a bit dark uh, but they still work quite nicely on there uh, just remember that they will be high contrast when you do it um, and also so you only saw me do it on the front section there but i will be doing it all over the rest of the model as well in various parts wherever i've taken the highlights up to like a you know where i took the highest highlight with the airbrush i'll also be doing those scratches in those same places so you'll just see that up here in the video as you go uh, as we go along 
so here you can see me painting, showing you how to paint uh, the red lavender killer missile and that I uh, basically don't use uh, by the end of the video. Um, it's pretty straightforward. The red is harder to paint and highlight than black. And the black, I, I won't only use black because uh, it, it's just like a very nice neutral color. Uh, if you want, you can paint some fancy things on this. When I, uh, the thing was when I painted it red, I had this idea in my head that I was going to paint on uh, like a, a grinning face on the front of the missile and i think i still think that would look quite cool um, but ideally if you're going to do something like that uh, don't glue the missile on like i have um, and it'll make it much easier to paint both sides of it because that was the main reason that stopped me doing it uh, because it would be pretty tricky to get the face on the other side of the rocket and uh, but in terms of highlights here um, i'm using sort of a semi-realistic uh, light position again so if you hold the model uh, just under the lamp what you can see is uh, where the, the light falls naturally uh, however obviously depending on which angle you hold the model under the light looks different uh, but what you will generally find is there will be a long bright highlight going down the whole length of the rocket but because I've painted this to look best from the front uh, I'm painting the side you can see obviously on the video uh, but also when the uh, model is rotated to the front uh, you'll see that there is a uh, extra highlight placed right on the tip of the rocket uh, just to make it kind of like pop out a bit more uh, and look good from that angle so you have to tweak it a little bit for what looks good and you know comparing it to what is uh, sort of a realistic uh, way the light hits it but it does mean that you know by painting it from the side as well that it'll look good from multiple angles uh, there are a couple of bounce highlights that I paint on as well. Uh, it's kind of like pushing the uh, the painting standard maybe a little bit higher than it needs to be for something like this. Uh, but I do paint a bounce highlight on the other side of the rocket, so pretty much the same as what you're just seeing here, uh, but it's you know on the other side of it. So it's um, but it's a bit more tricky to get because obviously the uh, the hull of the uh, Sentinel is kind of in the way. Um, but you know it doesn't have to be perfect but just like a slight bounce highlight so it look, doesn't look like half of the rocket is unpainted and do the same again um, for the underside so you'll be able to see uh, how the, the the shape of the highlight should look uh, just because as you rotate it around the light will naturally move and it'll show you like a, a highlight point um, because but obviously as you move it around it moves each time so you have to pick which highlight points you want to do so I picked the the main one at the side because that's the you know the most obvious place um, where the light falls naturally and that's where um, uh, because it's quite a big highlight that I've painted down the side as well uh, so it's going to catch your vision very obviously um, then the ones at the side and the bottom they're not uh, taken quite as high for the highlights and by the way the highlights I'm using so remember it's Mephiston Red as the base color and then all I'm doing is adding a little bit of IT yellow uh, each uh, for each layer and then going over the top of what I've that I've done before but just making it a little bit smaller each time and you can see the marks that I'm making are sort of like oh, the first mark is kind of a big strong line going down it and then I'm doing these scratchy marks on top of it uh, because that helps it all blend together uh, just a little note actually where you can see the top of the model here you can see the highlights on the uh, kind of like the top hatch around the chipping and I've actually done those going all the way around now it's a little bit uh, tricky to decide how to do highlights on the tops of vehicles like this because so when it, you're looking at it from the front or sides it's really easy because you're always painting the lower edge to get that three-dimensional look when it's on top there's not really a specific angle to um, hold it at so you can either kind of just pick one angle and go with that or you can just paint all the way around it it'll lose a little bit of the three-dimensional look by painting it all the way around but uh, it kind of it just means that it will look good from every angle by doing it like that whereas obviously you're not going to turn the model upside down <laughs> to get you know for looking at different angles so when you're painting the front and side uh, or back or whatever it's a lot easier uh, to, to do the, the 3D uh, look and still have it look good from those angles uh, so on the rocket here we're now uh, going on towards the uh, the final sort of highlights for it uh, and again I've added a little bit more ice yellow to it. The reason I'm using ice yellow and not white is 
it just has a small amount of yellow in so it's not quite as pinky uh, I mean it it's not going to make a massive difference as you can see it still looks a bit pinky but it's not as pink as it would be if you just use um, straight white onto, into the red so it adds a, a tiny bit of warmth in there uh, but if you do find that you've highlighted it too much and by highlighted too much what I mean is that these highlights these sort of final stage highlights when you apply them uh, if they're too fat uh, it means that it's a big pink stripe that you've just painted down there and if especially if you blend it in at the edges uh, that's a lot of pink on there so it's probably going to look more pink than red and it just means that you've made the the lines too thick uh, so all you have to do is take some of the Mephiston red water it down into a glaze so around about four or five parts water to one part paint uh, but you know check the thinner you have the better the blending will be but the longer it'll take so if you're feeling a bit lazy maybe only like two and a half parts water to one part paint it won't be as smooth a blend but it'll get the job done a lot quicker uh, and then just glaze um, from about halfway up the highlight back towards the uh, sort of the flat Mephiston red areas on it and it'll just knock down the, uh, the size of the highlights a bit uh, and also it might be handy to just to do the, that anyway uh, because with all the little scratchy marks that you put on some of them might be a bit big or, or you know just too strong so you know glazing over it uh, will knock them back a bit as well and help to blend those in so moving on quickly now to the OSL uh, this is very quick uh, and very simple for a very striking effect and I see loads of guides and things on how to do OSL there's nothing particularly fancy or different about the way I'm doing it here the colors do make a difference though uh, so you can see just to start with all I've done is Mephiston red again and just covered all of the uh, central part the um, like the coils uh, then I've gone to uh, also and so you want a bit of overspray all the way around that's going to be your glow so it's really important that you get the overspray going around because that's the only red you're going to see on there <laughs> after that the orange is focused in the middle um, and so if you don't have that red on first one it, you won't create that darker area to make the glow look like high contrast um, you can see here if you look on my needle the, there's a little bit of dry tip on the needle so I've just had to so I was trying to get some paint out there it wasn't coming out so I just quickly uh, rubbed that paint off the, the needle tip there uh, it does happen sometimes um, but it's, it's not a major issue um, but when you're doing this this troll state orange so again it's thinned with Tamiya x20a uh, and you're just spraying it into the just over the coils now you do have to be a little bit delicate with how you do this because you don't want to get over spray onto the uh, the red part this is just purely for the coil um, and you can see again that's how I, um, just two quick layers with the airbrush that's all I've done then we're just finishing off by hand uh, I'm using uh, Ural yellow here uh, it's and you can see it's very very watered down the reason for that is so it works kind of like kind of like contrast paint but without any of the medium uh, it might actually thinking about it be a good idea to mix some contrast medium in with the uh, the Ural yellow when you do this because then it'll flow better into the recesses uh, and you'll be less likely to make any sort of coffee stain effect and co by coffee stain I mean uh, you get a darker ring around the edge of the uh, the mark and it, it not quite as concentrated in the middle uh, so the, the contrast medium would help with that uh, but in you know for this I haven't I just mixed it with uh, I've just mixed paint with water and it's just watered down around about two parts pour, uh, water to one part paint try not to overflow it I perhaps put a little bit too much paint on there um, but you basically just want it watery so the capillary action runs the paint into the uh, recesses uh, just let it dry a little bit as well um, so I'm running through this really quickly in the video but you know when you're doing it just take a little bit longer let the paint dry uh, then you can see I've got some ice yellow next to it now if you don't have ice yellow don't worry just add a bit of white to some Ural yellow and you get pretty much the same color so uh, and all you're doing is taking some of that again watered down quite a bit uh, and but you're doing in a smaller area right in the cent center of the uh, the, the coils now if you're not too steady with your hands and you find it uh, a bit tricky getting the paintbrush in there don't worry if you go over the edges um, because it's quite easy to tidy up all you have to do is go back with the troll slayer orange after you've got all these uh, yellow highlights on there 
And by the way, so I've only taken that twice yellow there in the video, but uh, if you want to make it even brighter, uh, use some white as the final highlight right in the middle. Uh, but anyway, so I was saying about tidying up the, the rings, uh, and I actually did it a little bit on there as well, uh, because on the side that I was showing you in the video, I was a bit messy. But uh, wait until it's completely dry, go back with the Troll Slayer Orange and just gently uh, paint the raised areas on the coils, and that'll create more of a high contrast look. Um, and also, I mean, you saw it in the video, but I haven't mentioned it. Uh, when you're painting the uh, the first yellow, you might want to pick out a few of the edges um, on the like the armor panels and things just around the coils. Um, and also, you can see on the front of the uh, Sentinel there, I've also airbrushed some glow coming off of it. Now, the placement isn't it's not great uh, in terms of realism, but it looks good. So that's that's what I've gone for. But um, it's exactly the same process as you just saw for painting the coils. So it's Mephiston red, then some Trollslayer orange, and then a little bit of Uriel yellow just to pick out a few bits by hand. Don't airbrush the Uriel yellow, whatever you do, uh, and don't go any brighter than Uriel yellow. So don't add any white to it when it's on the uh, canopy of the Sentinel because it'll make it too bright. You, you want the plasma gun to be the brightest part. So while I've just been talking about that, the video's obviously moved on and we're painting the lens on the front. Um, so I'm, there's actually two of these. So if you look on the front of the plasma uh, cannon, there's also a, a larger lens. I probably should have <laughs> shown you on that one, but it's it's the same process, whatever I'm doing. Uh, so it's Sotec Green uh, to, so starting off with obviously a black, uh, paint it black if you've got some airbrush of the uh, armor color over it. Uh, so it's a black circle. Uh, you go all the way around with uh, Sotec green and then paint like a a dot in the top left but you're covering a large area of the surface and then each time you add a bit of white to the Sotec green for multiple layers and every time you do it you go over what you've painted before but just in a smaller area. Uh, the only thing to really take note of while I'm doing this is uh, it's obviously the circle on the top left that's pretty obvious that's the shine point but also on the bottom right uh, I'm also getting a smaller and smaller little highlight dot or sort of like tiny little line if you like um, just at the, the bottom right of the circle uh, because that represents the light sort of uh, traveling through the lens and coming out at the bottom right it, it makes it look more shiny um, so you can see then the final thing you do is just put a, a little white dot over the circle that you've been painting on the top left uh, and again uh, a little highlight uh, at the uh, the bottom right you can see here I'm just finishing off on the plasma gun as well so it's the same process regardless of the size now if you wanted to get really fancy and it was a large lens you could do multiple reflections uh, but for something this size it's really not worth it and actually it looks a little bit cleaner and easier to read uh, with the uh, these small lenses so uh, it works better keeping them quite simple uh, now you might notice that I do it slightly different how Games Workshop do lenses they don't really do the the large circular dot um, you know with a transition around the edge they just do kind of a white dot in the top left and there's more transition in the bottom right neither is right or wrong I just prefer getting a bit more color on there with the shine coming from the the reflection on the top left um, and now we're going on to the uh, sort of the window section so the three of these you can just about see on the left there that I've already painted the ones on the sides so this is just the ones on the front um, I'm using quite a thin brush for this as well. Again, this is a size 00, zero Artis Opus brush. Uh, you can use a larger brush if you want, but you're going to dramatically increase your chances of catching the sides because these are very heavily recessed. Uh, I'm using P3 Eosin Green. Uh, I have no idea if that's how you pronounce it, but whatever, it's like a you know, I-O-S-E-N um, Green from P3. Uh, if you don't have that, you could use something like uh, Warpstone Glow. Uh, maybe war boss green but uh, it's not quite as sort of uh, yellowy in color although that's not a, a massive problem the main thing to take into account is uh, when you're painting it you're starting from around about two-thirds uh, up on the uh, the window and then painting downwards so those are always towards you don't paint towards the left you know so always drag the, the paint down towards the right hand side and that will create uh, like a smoother transition because wherever you take the paintbrush off, that leaves a larger deposit of paint. Uh, so actually you're creating a transition just with one color. It's around about 
50-50 water to paint. But again, check to see how the paint flows for you. There's a, like a multitude of reasons why the paint might be uh, flow differently. Uh, so you know, any time I give a a mixture, uh, it's only a rough estimation, and you need to check it yourself to make sure it works or not. But the you know the paint is quite thin and fluid, uh, while still being also f fairly opaque as well. Uh, so you know you're dragging it downwards, and then as you do multiple layers, you get smaller and smaller each time. Uh, but don't spend too much time with the first layer of green because obviously if you look on the wet palette in the top left there there are a lot of uh, highlight stages to go through and if you spend too long uh, doing a transition with this color you're going to end up with a dark green transition going you know along the window uh, the viewing slit area and it's going to be quite dark green you won't have like the nice high, high contrast so it won't stand out very much uh, whereas obviously you can see I take it up to nearly white on the, the right hand side and that will make a huge difference for whether it stands out or not. I mean, however, if you prefer it to look like the, the dull sort of green color with the transition there, you can just do it with one color uh, paint and, you know, just building up the layers. Uh, in So it's kind of like really thick glazing, if you if you like. Um, if you wanted to get a really smooth transition, then you can just do glazing, which would be kind of like four or five parts water to one part paint again, and just keep going over, always painting towards the right-hand side. Uh, and you would build up a really nice transition but uh, obviously i like to do it a bit quicker than that so it's a thick glaze and um like it, it's not perfectly smooth transition but it's it's good enough for what i'm doing here uh, so the next stage of color i'm using moot green if you don't have moot green and you've used a particular green to start with all you have to do is add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white and you get the same kind of result uh, but it's you know you want a, a more yellowy green and again keep it quite thin uh, moot green has better coverage better opacity than uh, eos and green definitely better than uh, warpstone glow or warboss green those uh, you know they, they don't have amazing coverage but uh, moot green does have pretty good coverage so just be aware if you use the same uh, amount of thinning from like say say you've used warpstone green and you water it down one and a half parts water to one part paint then you take moot green and you water that down one and a half parts water to one part paint you're going to have a uh, thicker like stronger marks with the moot green than you had with the uh, the warpstone glow uh, so you kind of like have to learn each paint individually uh, you know, th again that's just something that you pick up with practice and again each paint can be different depending on manufacturers if they've been consistent with how they've made it or just how long you've had the pot open and or you know all sorts of things like that so again always check your paint rub it on your thumb rub it on a tile just test it uh, eventually you just do all this automatically so you won't have to worry too much about if you've got your consistency right or not but it does uh, make a difference to you know learning each paint for how effective it is in terms of coverage so again you can see I've just used uh, moot green there and it's uh, um, I've lost my thread <laughs> so it's, it's still uh, it's a fairly bright green and you could stop at that point uh, but if you wanted uh, you can take it uh, further like uh, I am here so it's just adding white to the color um, and you can do a few stages of white if you want, uh, depending on how bright you want to take it. Um, I'm not taking it to pure white. I don't want, because it's in cover as well, so I don't want to take it up to quite the same level as of brightness as the little um, blue lenses on there. Uh, what you'll also probably find is you're going to catch the edges a little bit with the brush as well. So uh, you can't see it on the wet palette there, but obviously I've still got the colors from the uh, highlighting the armor. Remember, this is Demonet Hide. Uh, mixed with white and uh, all I'm so I'm painting in a couple of the chips and things again as well don't worry too much about that but the edges the, there's a very very strong chance you'll have caught some of those uh, while painting the green in uh, so there if you just caught that quickly uh, I have finished off painting the uh, all the lenses and things on there and the rocket had turned to black um, like hopefully 
the watching how I painted the red will give you a good indication of how I painted the black. Like it's exactly the same process, just a different color. But now what we're going to do is finish off the metal work. Uh, so remember the metal was first of all burnt iron from Vallejo and I just covered the whole, all the metal areas with burnt iron. Then uh, when I did the dark oath flesh uh, contrast wash, uh, that also colored the metals. Then they were given uh, a layer of uh, melon oil. So the metals are really dark right now, dark and grimy. And if you wanted to leave it like that, again, like if you were trying to smash out an army quick, it looks fine. And it's also quite high contrast against the armor panels. Uh, it's purely about how much time you want to spend on it. Uh, one thing that actually really bugged me when I was uh, looking at the video, doing the voiceover here, uh, I hadn't filled the gaps very well between the uh, on the circular bits where the legs join in on the sockets, like the hip sockets. You can see those lines, um, the gap things. And really, I wished I'd filled those in uh, a bit better. Uh, to be fair, the front one gets covered by the canopy, so you don't have to worry about that, even though you can see it while you're painting the legs. But uh, the one at the back uh, is still visible from uh, when you put the canopy on. So, or kind of like the top part, you know, the the box, <laughs> the top box of the uh, the Sentinel. It, so it covers front ones, not the back ones. So uh, it's probably a good idea to spend uh, just a little bit of time. Um, Mate, either with green stuff or uh, sprue glue, uh, just to fill those in because it, you, you get a better look to the model. Um, but anyway, uh, looking at what I'm doing with the metallic, so I've put the uh, burnt iron back onto the uh, the well palette there. Uh, so it's not even thin. The thing with the uh, the Vallejo um, what, metal color, uh, so the airbrush colors. Uh, is that you don't really have to thin them to work with them. They're nice and fluid. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful. Uh, if anything, I would say put it into your well palette and give it a minute or two just to start drying because they're so fluid that it's actually very easy for the paint to run into recesses. So if you took touch like one of the rivets or um, part of the recess point on the paint can very easily flow into those areas. Uh, but having you know said that they it does give really really nice coverage and it's very shiny so i mean they are my preference um until i find something better i've got some other ones i want to try still but uh they do work really really nicely but like i say it might be an idea just to let them dry for a moment or two uh, just so that you have a bit more control over them uh, and all i'm doing is basically if you remember near the beginning of the video when i talked about the modulation um, mixed with a little bit of sort of realistic lighting uh, for painting the all the armor panels on the Sentinel. I'm doing a very similar thing with the metallics here. Uh, so I'm just looking where the light naturally falls and then in other areas I'm doing a bit of modulation so it's light next to dark. Uh, and Try not to drop the model while you're doing it. Uh, you d the nice thing about doing metallics is if you're going to do them quickly like I'm doing here you don't have to be quite as neat as you do with uh, armor panel painting. So uh, because of the way the light hits it, you can be a bit rough and ready, a little bit, you can, a bit scratchy with the paint. It just looks like it's dirty metal. Um, so you just go around, cover all of the metal parts on the model. Remember to do the top half as well, like the uh, you know, the armored box. Remember, uh, and you know for for all the metal parts, do it all at once. And then we can go on to weathering them a little bit more. So they're already quite dark. And again, if you're happy with how it looks at that stage just leave it like that uh, but I'm just pushing it a little bit more uh, just because I enjoy sp uh, spending a little bit time a uh, bit more time on the model and I'm not going to turn this into an army so it's just a fun model for me to paint but uh, you can if you look on the top left there in the wet in the well palette sorry this is watered down rhinox hide now you can do this as a glaze I mean it is basically a glaze but it's a, a thick glaze so I'm I've watered it down to a roundabout two and a half parts water to one part paint uh, you might find that even a little bit thicker maybe just two parts water or one and a half again test it see what your results are uh, but this is where I'm pushing a bit more of the modulation look as well uh, also next to that on the right hand side is troll slayer orange uh, for you know to get a bit of rust in there uh, and that's also similarly watered down you know we'll say two and a half parts water to one part paint but um, test it to see which you prefer uh, basically the placement for the orange uh, rusty type look that's going more into recesses so around the uh, rivets and things so you can see there 
I can just doing that and because it's watered down the paint naturally flows around the recesses anyway and then for you can also add in some like little scratches little blobs and things and because it's watered down it leaves a soft mark it's not like it's going to leave a, uh, a rust scratch which would look a bit weird but if at any point you find you've gone a bit too heavy with that and it is quite interesting to sort of overwork with the orange uh, on like the flat surfaces as well just to add a bit of color like a natural oxidization on like the, the metal surfaces uh, and also remember when you first apply this because there's a large amount of water it will look very orange when you first apply it but as the water uh, evaporates then it will become much duller so just bear that in mind when you're doing it you might be like oh I've, I've um, not watered this down enough uh, so you put it on there it looks really bright orange and then you're like oh no it's too bright so you water it down a bit more and start doing it and when that dries you can hardly see it so there is a little bit of experimentation here if you're not too sure it's always better to be more watered down than less because uh you you know the, any mistakes you make will not be as visible but if you want to save a bit of time or you know not spend forever just doing layers and layers of very very pale like hardly hardly visible orange then having it thicker will work better uh, but you also might find that you want to do multiple uh, mixes of orange so you can have a thicker one where you want to get the stronger um, more visible marks and then one that's watered down even a bit more so I mean you can see here I'm just doing glazes all over areas just to get uh, colors there into the metal and also remember so it can be a little bit fun you get carried away on one section think oh that looks really cool but now you've just spent like say half an hour on a, a leg joint or whatever you've got to paint the rest of the model in the same way so you could end up spending a long time by doing this but I found this kind of fun I don't uh, usually spend too much time doing uh, true metallic metals but I will be doing the golden demon piece with uh, an Adeptus Titanicus Warlord Titan and I want it to be really kind of rusty because it's going to be corrupted by Nurgle so I thought this would be an, a good opportunity for me to have a quick play around to see what sort of look I can get um, a few of you might be wondering why I'm actually just using normal paints on top of uh, metallic paint and but I think you know, just looking at it I think you can get a good indication so one it's very watered down so you still get some of the metallic elements showing through but also it dulls it quite strongly uh, while at the same time picking out when you've picked out the highlights those are really bright so you get this high contrast look uh, which gives it some good definition it looks really grubby uh, and rusty but it still looks sort of metal all the way around uh, you know not all metal has to be super shiny uh, so if you looked at like a piece of sheet steel that's been left out in the rain for quite a bit it's not going to get much shine on it and if, you know but like if it's had a little bit of wear caught you know a bit of the rust and stuff has rubbed off like on the edges where you know it's more likely to to be caught with you know things brushed by it then those will be sort of shiny metal and then most of it will be kind of grubby and dirty uh, with a bit of rust so this is like trying to simulate that kind of thing and it i mean okay maybe this is a bit more heavily weathered than it would uh, need to be just assume that he's been walking through some jungle area uh, but mainly how i'm painting this is as i said just for a bit of fun just to test out sort of uh, the results um, obviously when I do this for the Golden Demon I'll spend a little bit longer on it and uh, you know make it look a, a bit better but uh, I think it's a, a very interesting kind of result and it's good to uh, see some things where it's where you're actually using sort of flat paint along with true met uh, metallics because I think what a lot of people do when they're painting true metals is they will either paint it metal with the met metallic paint Get, and then give it a wash uh, and maybe a highlight afterwards or they will just pick the color say gold or whatever and then just highlight it up by adding silver to it um, and then if they want it darker they look for a darker metallic color you don't have to just use uh, metallic paints for highlighting and shading uh, metals now I mean for the highlights it is better to go with um, adding silver to it or chrome or whatever like a bright color uh, but for shading you can add whatever colors you want on there and obviously for weathering it doesn't actually make sense to use metallic colors for weathering because the, the oxidization is taking away the metallic element so it i think it's you know it's worth having a, a play around with anyway uh, and also don't forget so it's like a science fiction universe and they're using uh, made-up materials 
so if you want to try out some different colors on it you can um, try all different colors of oxidization uh, and no one can tell you that it's wrong because the materials that they have aren't real anyway so and also the you know there's magic in the universe as well so it could be like it's got a nurgle infestation or whatever um so if you want to try some greens or purples or uh, yellows or whatever for your oxidization or disease on your metals then uh, go for it and you can get some really interesting uh, results i'm certainly going to be trying some different colors anyway on uh, on the metals when i uh, do them and you can see here so i've still gone back again with the burnt iron and i'm just picking out the edges again because when i've been painting on all the uh, weathering uh, you kind of like dull you know you catch bits of it if, especially if you're doing it quickly like i am you catch some of the edges and things and it just helps just to punch up the uh, the brightness a little bit so here's the final shot where i've just spent a little bit of time just finishing everything off you can see clearly uh, the black rocket now as well um, and also you can see a little bit of the uh, the front highlight I was talking about where I said when you look at it from the front I've just pushed the highlight a little bit brighter at the front there just so that it stands out and makes it match the lighting for the you know the front angle um, but yeah that's the end of the video uh, I hope you enjoyed it uh, please subscribe I've got uh, more stuff coming uh, I have actually built and primed a an Imperial Guardsman as well so uh, I will be doing a video for that and I've, uh, well, I've got loads of other videos I've got to do as well um, and don't forget I have my Patreon and my uh, own personal website where I have uh, more high level stuff uh, like all my Golden Demon uh, entries that I'm working on um, but yeah anyway so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.